Today, I'm going to explain a comedy, drama, and fantasy film The Lake family resides in harmony at their house by the sea. There's the ever-busy mother, Mary, the always active father, James, the charming yet absent-minded uncle, Desmond, the awkward son, Tim, and, the free-spirited daughter, Catherine or Kit Kat. Every year, they host a New Year's Eve party with family and friends. At this year's party, Tim navigates through the crowd feeling awkward and dragged around by his friend, Jay. During the countdown to the new year, a girl he's been dancing with, Polly, leans for a kiss, but he shakes her hand instead, leaving her disappointed. The following day, Tim wakes up, overwhelmed with embarrassment and a terrible hangover. He's called into his father's study. James, his father, then tells Tim that he's about to share with him a secret that he's never told anyone before. According to James, the men born into their family, including Tim, can travel back in time, but it's limited to their own lifetime. They cannot go to a past they didn't experience or a place they've never been to. To do this, they must go to a dark place like a large cupboard and think of the place and time where they want to be, and they'll find themselves there. Unsurprisingly, Tim thinks this is a joke. He shakes his head at his father, thinking that he's pulling his leg. To prove that it isn't true, Tim goes inside the closet and thinks of the New Year's Eve party last night. After a few seconds, he comes out of the closet and is surprised to see himself dressed in his clothes from yesterday. Music and conversations echo from downstairs. He heads down and is immediately pulled by Jay, evading a table that he previously knocked over. At the countdown, he kisses Polly, who reacts giddily. Afterward, Tim goes back into the closet and travels to the present. Realizing that the time travel is real, he listens to his father's experience about the ability, discovering that it's how James seemingly had a lot of time for them. James advises Tim not to use the ability for money or power, so Tim decides that he'll use it to find love. That summer, Kit Kat invites her boyfriend's cousin, Charlotte, to stay at the beach house for two months. As the family sunbathes with their guest one afternoon, Tim hopes to get on Charlotte's good side. Seeing an opportunity, Tim agrees to put sunscreen on Charlotte's back but ends up spilling the bottle on her. Feeling humiliated, he travels back in time and acts more casually and carefully about it. Throughout the summer, Tim attempts to impress Charlotte but fails each time until it is too late. And then finally, it's Charlotte's last day in the house. On the evening before she leaves, Tim hopes to confess his feelings for her but is instantly shot down before he could, discovering that Kit Kat already warned Charlotte that he might do this. Charlotte wonders if things would have turned out differently if he'd talked to her before her last night at their home. The thought gives him an idea. Tim travels back in time to confess to Charlotte in the middle of summer. But this time, Charlotte tells him to ask her again on her last night at their home. This confirms that he never had a chance with Charlotte, no matter what. Tim finally gives up on pursuing her. The day after Charlotte left, Tim leaves their home and moves to London where he stays with James' friend, Harry. Tim is excited for the new chapter of his life ahead but is disappointed to learn that Harry is a short-fused playwright. In the first six months, Tim hasn't had any luck in romance, finding that his career as a lawyer acquaints him mostly with other men. His luck turns when one night, Jay takes him to Don's Lenoir, the restaurant where the guests dine in total darkness. Here, they are seated next to a woman named Mary and her friend, Joanna. In the darkness, Tim and Mary get to know each other and have a great time. After dinner, Tim and Jay finally meet the girls face to face. Tim is stunned upon seeing Mary, and it's pretty evident that sparks have flown as the couple lay eyes on each other. She gives him her phone number before parting ways. Tim walks back home with a skip in his step, only to be welcomed by Harry's angered growl. The opening of his play was ruined by the lead actor forgetting his lines. Wanting to make things better, Tim goes back in time and joins Harry in the theater just before opening night. He approaches the lead actor, Tom, and convinces him to practice his lines. This works, but then another actor forgets his lines instead. Tim goes back in time again and helps him out. 
The play turns out to be a success. However, when Tim checks his phone, he realizes that Mary's number is no longer there. His travels in time had erased his lovely evening with Mary. Feeling distraught, Tim joins an ecstatic Harry for breakfast the next day. Harry shares the newspaper where Tim finds an ad for a Kate Moss exhibition in the city. Remembering that Mary is a fan of Kate Moss, he spends the week at the exhibit, hoping to run into her. After a whole week, Mary finally walks in, and Tim nervously approaches her. However, their interaction doesn't go smoothly, and he learns that Mary now has a boyfriend named Rupert. Tim learns that Mary met Rupert at Joanna's party. He learns the details of the party and goes back in time to stop it from happening. Tim arrives at Joanna's apartment and convinces Mary to leave the party with him before Rupert arrives. Mary is a little hesitant, but she feels a magnetic force pulling her towards him. As they leave, they brush past Rupert, who unknowingly walked past his supposed future girlfriend. Meanwhile, the two have a lovely dinner where they get to know each other even more. Tim ends up walking Mary home, and she invites him up to her apartment. The atmosphere turns hot, and they take the date to the bedroom. But after awkwardly tripping over Mary's shoes and having difficulty unclipping her bra, Tim experiences an awkward first sexual encounter with Mary. He decides to go back in time, and this time, he skips over Mary's shoes and quickly undresses her. This time everything goes well, but Tim knows he can do better. After Tim's multiple attempts, the couple spends the perfect first night of passion. Over the following months, their relationship continues to bloom, and the couple eventually moves in together. While at the theater with a co-worker named Rory, Tim encounters Charlotte, but the conversation quickly turns awkward. He tries a second time, but it doesn't go well again. For the third attempt, he decides not to approach her, and instead, Charlotte spots him and initiates the conversation. Charlotte invites him to dinner, where she mentions her regrets about turning him down in the past. Charlotte asks him to walk her to her apartment and tempts him to go inside with her, but Tim refuses. Being able to turn down his first love helps Tim realize how deeply he loved Mary. He runs back home and wakes her up to propose to her. It ends up not as romantic as he expected, so he does it again. The second time, she says yes. That summer, Tim takes Mary home to meet his parents. Mary and her mother get along, and Tim spends quality time with his father. To his surprise, Kit Kat is also home after having a horrible time in London. The Lake family bursts in joy upon the announcement of Tim and Mary's wedding and Mary's pregnancy. Their wedding ceremony is filled with romance and laughter, even though it stormed during the ceremony and the wedding reception. The tent is torn and blown by the wind and so everyone is forced to take cover in the house. Tim goes back in time and switches his best man when Rory, Harry, and Jay mess up their speeches until finally, he chooses his father. Months later, Mary gives birth to their daughter, Bosie. Tim is mesmerized at the experience of raising a child, both for its precious moments and the difficulties. They move into a new house, and soon, it's Bosie's first birthday. All the guests arrive, including Harry and Rory, but Kit Kat is late to the party. The doorbell rings, and Tim answers it, but instead of Kit Kat, it's her troublesome boyfriend, Jimmy. He and Kit Kat argued earlier that day which ended with Kit Kat driving by herself. Kit Kat had been drinking earlier that day, leading her to crash her car on the way to Tim's house. Hoping to save her, Tim goes back in time and picks her up from her home instead. But this doesn't solve the problem. Kit Kat maintains a drinking problem stemming from her unhappy relationship with Jimmy. Tim talks to his sister, hoping to reach out to her. When it doesn't work, he takes Kit Kat back in time during the New Year's Eve party where she met Jimmy. But instead of flirting with Jimmy, she releases her pent up anger on him and punches him despite him not remembering her in this timeline. The siblings go back to the present, and immediately, Kit Kat realizes her feelings for Jay. This time, she dates Jay instead, and their relationship turns out better than she had with Jimmy. Having saved his sister's life and happiness, Tim heads back home but finds that he has a son instead of his daughter, Bosie. 
The sudden realization makes his heart sinks. Immediately, he goes into a cupboard and goes to the past when his son was born to talk to James. James confirms that any change he makes before his child is born is likely to result in a different child being conceived. If he wishes to keep Bosie, he can never change anything that happened before she was born. Unable to accept losing the daughter he knew, Tim goes back again in time to undo the changes he made to Kit Kat's life and allows her car accident to happen. With Kit Kat in the hospital, Tim and Mary stay by her side until she recovers. Their support leads Kit Kat to decide on changing her life for the better. Remembering the alternate timeline when she's happy with Jay, Tim suggests for Kit Kat to start seeing him. Arriving home from the hospital, Tim relishes in his daughter's presence. Their happiness inspires him to have another child. Despite Mary's protests at first, they conceive their son two years later. One evening, Tim helps Mary prepare to meet her company's best-selling author but they accidentally leave Posey downstairs, where she destroys the manuscript from Mary's office. Tim wants to use time travel to fix it, but their night is interrupted by a call from his mother, announcing that James has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. Tim, Mary, and Kit Kat visit the beach house where Tim talks to his father. Their time travel cannot undo his cancer without risking Tim and Kit Kat's births. In the end, Time travel cannot fix everything life throws at them. James gives Tim what he deems is a far more important lesson for their ability. The first is to go through life as normally as possible, with all the everyday tensions and worries. Secondly, after he lived the day once for the first time, he should go back and relive moments of his life while paying attention to how sweet the world can be. Tim follows his advice and finds happiness in both the mundane and the special moments in his life. However, there are still days that he doesn't wish to relive, such as the day his father died. Not ready to say goodbye, Tim travels back in time to visit his father while he's still in good health. After James' death, Tim is comforted that he can still visit his father back in time whenever he misses him. One day, however, Mary decides that she wants a third child. Tim hesitates, knowing that having a third child will disable him from visiting his father again. With much thought, he lets go of the past and decides to carry on with the future. He then agrees to have another child. Months later, Mary is heavily pregnant and will be giving birth soon. This is Tim's last chance to visit his father in the past. He goes back in time and plays table tennis with his father for the last time. Seeing the sadness in Tim's eyes, James realizes that it is their last time together. He accepts this and lets him know that he agrees with his son's decision. As a treat, they both travel back in time to when Tim was a young boy. Both in better health and with more energy, James and Tim run and play by the beach for the last time. Tim says his final goodbyes to his father and returns to the present time when his third child is born. Years pass and Tim continues with life normally, spending both the laughs and tears with his family. He has completed his family with Mary, while Kit Kat also gives birth to her child with Jay. One morning, he allows Mary to sleep in and prepares breakfast for his kids, relishing their presence. Tim decides to never time travel again, living each day as if it's the second time he's lived it. This time, he focuses on appreciating life from the big events to the smallest details.